In this segment, we'll be looking at the most common analysis tools which are used to investigate faults and other disturbances on the power system. These are oscillographs, system one-line diagrams, sequence of events recorders, relay targets, DC schematic diagrams. By correlating the one-line diagram with the oscillograph traces, we can usually reconstruct what happened and consequently analyze the fault. We may then verify our findings by checking the printout from a sequence of events recorder, also known as an SER. The SER may be an integral part of the oscillograph system, but quite often it is a standalone machine. This type of recorder is capable of monitoring 1,000 input points. For example, breaker open or closed status, breaker trip coil status, relay operations, transformer and generator alarms, and so on. The SER is constantly monitoring the status of each input point and prints out a detailed record whenever the status changes. A typical SER printout gives the exact time of the event down to the millisecond. It can distinguish between two events occurring one millisecond apart. It provides a plain language description of the event, the identification number of the input point, and an A or N code indicating whether the status of the device became abnormal or normal. In some installations, instead of a specific SER, the status is monitored by telemetering, that is, the SCADA system. Another tool we need to use in fault investigation is information regarding relay targets, which is usually logged by operators. Like the SER output, these logs are normally used to verify and support the conclusions drawn by examining the oscillograph records. However, in some cases, relay target and SER data have provided the missing link in solving problems due to disturbances. Now, let's take a closer look at the oscillograph machine. There are four oscillograph systems in widespread use on the power system today. These are referred to as quick start, pre-fault, continuous, and digital. The quick start oscillograph is the simplest type and uses a high-speed recorder. As soon as a fault is sensed by a protective relay or other sensor, the machine starts and the paper begins to move after three or four milliseconds. Of course, this presents a problem since the data at the very beginning of the fault is lost. The loss amounts to about one quarter cycle of data. Also, there is no way of capturing the conditions on the system just prior to the fault. In spite of these disadvantages, many users prefer the quick start system. They are willing to live with some data loss in exchange for the simplicity of the machines. Another type of recording system uses a pre-fault oscillograph. This machine has a built-in solid-state memory that can store several cycles of data, up to 30 cycles in some machines. The memory works in a recirculating fashion. For example, at any instant in time, the memory stores the immediately preceding 30 cycles of data. As time goes on, the memory is constantly storing new data while dumping old data. But there's always 30 cycles of data in storage at any given time. Now, when a fault is sensed, the machine begins printing out the 30 cycles of pre-fault information it has stored in memory. While this is being recorded, the fault information is being inserted into memory. By the time the actual fault data starts recording, the machine is fully up to speed. This results in a very clear transition between no fault and fault conditions. Because of the recirculating memory, no data is lost. A third type of fault recording machine is the continuous oscillograph. 
In contrast to the quick start and free fault recorders, this machine does not need to be started by a fault or disturbance, and it also does not use paper. Instead, it continuously records system conditions on reusable magnetic tape. When a fault occurs, we can save about six hours of data by initiating a save command. This can be done automatically by protective relays or other sensors immediately after a fault is detected. Data can also be saved manually by a remote switch on the operator's console. Since data is continuously being recorded, the operator can decide to save information after the disturbance has occurred. Once the data is saved on magnetic tape, we can get a hard copy printout of the waveforms for analysis. In addition to the oscillograph machines themselves, there are several accessories that must be installed to complete the recording system. And these include starting sensors or triggers to start the recordings, signal conditioners to prepare the data for recording, power supplies and inverters to provide an uninterruptible power source for the oscillographs, and time clocks to keep track of the exact time of recording. The time log helps coordinate the output from many recorders. The most important accessory is the starting sensor. The sensor is basically a relay which continuously monitors the power system and detects disturbances such as faults and power swings. The sensor signals an oscillograph machine to start recording. Fault sensors are the most common type. Now they typically respond to overcurrent or under voltage. For example, this overcurrent sensor in the neutral circuit of a transformer detects single line to ground faults out on the system. Often this sensor is backed up by a zero sequence voltage sensor connected across the broken delta winding of a voltage transformer. This measured voltage is zero under normal conditions, but it greatly increases for a line to ground fault. Thus we can set the voltage sensor very sensitively to provide good backup for the current sensor. We can also use a negative sequence voltage sensor connected to the bus. This will sense a phase-to-phase -phase fault on any line connected to the bus. You will remember this phaser diagram from an earlier lesson. It shows the voltage broken down into its positive and negative sequence voltages. Before the fault, we have balanced three-phase voltages. The negative sequence component is zero. As soon as the fault is applied between A and B phases, the negative sequence voltage suddenly increases. So when this sensor detects negative sequence voltage, we can be quite sure that a fault has occurred and recording can begin. Another type of sensor, the disturbance sensor, responds to slower changes in voltage, current, or even system frequency. These slower changes take place over many cycles and are commonly called system swings, instability, or oscillations. Oscillographs do have their limitations. For example, a lightning surge would not be recorded because it's much too fast. A typical current surge due to a lightning strike reaches its peak and decays to zero in a matter of microseconds. Although our conventional recording machines could not pick up the actual surge, we may be able to see the effect of the lightning. This trace shows B phase to neutral voltage on a transmission line during a lightning storm. Look carefully at these points. Here we see the high frequency effects of arresters operating and conducting surge current to ground. Subsequently at this point, the high voltage associated with the lightning surge flashed over the line insulators, creating a temporary phase to ground fault. You can see the dramatic decrease in voltage due to the fault. This particular recording was started automatically when the fault occurred and captured about five cycles of pre-fault data. 
Because of the free fault capability, we can see the effect of the lightning arresters. But take note, the recording would not have started at all if a fault had not subsequently developed. This is because the sensors can only detect longer term disturbances in the range of milliseconds or seconds. A normal arrestor discharge without a fault is too fast to be picked up by the sensors, so it would not start the recorder. We have been looking at oscillograms associated with faults on the system. Generally, the whole story can be shown within a few cycles, usually less than one second. System swings, such as those associated with instability, can also be recorded, but such swings may last for several hundreds of cycles and consequently give us a lot of paper to examine. Some oscillographs have the ability to change paper speed automatically when recording these longer-term swings. In recent years, most of the fault analysis systems installed are of the digital type, generally known as digital fault recorders. This type of system usually allows for a greater number of monitoring inputs. The measurement, that is, sampling, is made simultaneously from all inputs. And a very high rate of sampling is achieved, say, 6,000 measurements per second. The analog input is converted through an AD converter into a digital signal to be recorded in the memory of the recorder. The information can be viewed on the computer screen or printed out as required. Usually, the screen traces can be compressed or expanded in both time and amplitude so that a variety of signals can be compared. For precise examination, the curves can be overlapped. A distinctive advantage is the capability for immediate remote retrieval. Information from various locations can be brought into a master computer for analysis at a central location. In this context, another advantage is in the precise timekeeping of the digital system. Yet another advantage is the capability to adjust the individual trigger set points from remote central control. In some digital systems, a printout of equipment status can be produced similar to the SER. As further development takes place, it is probable that gathered information will be analyzed instantaneously by the computer and switching operations initiated. Keep your eye open for such developments on your power system. So up to this point, we've discussed what types of oscillograph machines are installed, what sensors start the machines, and what types of disturbances they can record. Now, let's consider where on the power system these machines may be located. Obviously, we cannot locate the recorders at every substation. The cost would be too great. As a general rule, most utilities find that they can adequately monitor the system by installing recording machines at every station in the extra high voltage range, that is, 345 kV and above, every other station in the high voltage range, such as 115 kV and 230 kV, this allows at least one end of each high voltage line to be monitored. Every major generating station and every station with interconnections to other systems. Normally, oscillographs are not located at the distribution substations except those installed to analyze special problems or to conduct research. But it is just as important to analyze incidents occurring on the distribution system as on the high voltage power system, even though you may not have the help of sophisticated recording equipment. In this area, you will have to rely upon operating reports, including relay target data. Well, now it's time for a break. In the next segment, we'll be taking a closer look at the recordings themselves, that is, the oscillograms, and show how they can be used in fault investigations. For now, please turn off the videotape and consult your workbook. Thank you.